I want to be part of this world. When I woke up, I heard the city starting to chew the day between her ancient rotten teeth. In different parts of the neighborhood, her crumbling ivories were being drilled. Neighbors swore at each other through open windows. On the wall of the palazzo my bedroom looked out on, someone had written that all smiles are mysterious. Someone else had written that he thinks the Genoa Football Club is better than the Sampdoria Football Club, but in terms much more explicit than that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else had written that he loved a girl named Diana, and that to him she was a dream become reality. Later on, he, or somebody else, had crossed out the confession. There was garbage on the street. Pigeons backed around in their own shit. Today, ships will arrive with Dutch, German, and Danish tourists on their way back from Sardinia and Corsica. They arrive dozens of times a day, and the tourists cautiously and reluctantly lose themselves a bit inside the labyrinth for an afternoon. They seldom dare venture much further than the alleys a few meters from the Via San Lorenzo. Others walk along the Via Garibaldi to the Palazzo Rosso and the Palazzo Bianco, oblivious to the dark jungle lying at their feet. I like tourists. I can watch them and follow them for hours. They are touching in their tired attempts to make something of the day. When I was a boy, School used to give us a list of all the things we shouldn't forget to take on our school trip. The last item on the list was always a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> That's what tourists carry in their rucksacks when they trudge through the streets and look at the map on every corner to try to find out where on earth they are. <laughs> and why was that again? Finding every building pretty, every square nice, and every little shop cute is a matter of survival. Sweat pours from their foreheads. <laughs> they think they understand everything, but they are suspicious at the wrong moments while not fearing the real dangers. In Genoa, they are more helpless than anywhere else. Incomprehension and insecurity are written all over their faces as they, as they hesitantly wander around in the labyrinth. I like them. They are my brothers. I feel connected to them. But I want to be part of this world. I want to live in the labyrinth like a happy monster along with thousands of other happy monsters. I want to nestle in the city's innards. I want to understand the grinding of its old building's teeth. I went outside and walked along the Vico Vegetti, the Via San Bernardo, past the garbage cans and the Piazza Venerosa down to the Via Canetto del Lungo to do some shopping at Di Perdi. I bought detergent, Grissini and a bottle of wine. Then I took the same route home. But I did happen to be walking along with a plastic bag from Di Perdi. My bag was my green card, my residence permits, my asylum. Everyone could see that I had been admitted. Everybody could see I lived here. I had spoken scarcely more Italian than the words prego and grazia. But when they spotted my plastic bag from the supermarket, no one could consider me an outsider any longer. I stopped at the kiosk and bought Il Secolo Decimo Nono. Genova's local paper. I had resolved to read it every day. I clamped it proudly under my arm, making sure it was folded in such a way that everyone could see that it was ill sick. <laughs> when I got home, I looked at the wall of my building. I live on the ground floor of a tall palazzo in a narrow alleyway that climbs steeply. Ground floor is a relative concept for an alley at such a steep gradient. To the right of my entrance, 
there must be a large area under my bedroom that is probably storage space for a restaurant at number one Rosso, which has been closed since my first day here. The whole building is made of deeply pitted, greyish chunks of rock, crumbling cement and patches of old layers of plaster here and there. Or in all, the entire thing is rotten, peeling and decayed. But it has been for centuries and proud of it. Mm -hmm. When this was built, there was no gas, electricity, running water, television or internet. All these amenities had been tacked onto the outside in a makeshift way over the years. There are wires running from the roof along the front wall entering through holes drilled into the various apartments. The plumbing and sewage have been added to the outside too. A disordered tangle of lead piping. Next to my front door I noticed a thick pipe entering my house through a hole and then I saw the sticker again. Deratizzazione in corso, non toccare le esche. The same sticker I had spotted all over the city over the past days had been placed on the water pipes going through the wall into my house too. I smiled contentedly. I didn't live in a hotel. I lived in a real building, a real Genoese building with the same sticker as so many other buildings in the city. I must look up what it means at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the fun of it. <laughs>